This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. If you sign up to CuriosityStream with the link in the description, you'll also get access to Nebula, where you can watch the new Volksgeist original, A Brief History of Synthesizers. The first thing you hear on the White Stripes' debut studio album is a huge, thumping drum beat. It's simple but distinct, and it lays the foundation for Jack White's explosive guitar work. And really, that form continued throughout the entirety of the White Stripes career. Over the course of 14 years, the White Stripes established themselves as one of the greatest and most important rock bands of the modern era. They became critical darlings and commercial superstars, winning Grammys and selling out stadiums worldwide. And they did it all as a duo. But that's a fact that a lot of people seem to forget. In most discussions about the White Stripes, Meg White seems to be an afterthought, if she's even mentioned at all. It seems that people are all too willing to think of the White Stripes as exclusively a Jack White project and assume Meg just happened to be along for the ride. Even worse, people are quick to dismiss Meg as a bad drummer. But in reality, none of this is true. Meg White was a key creative force behind the White Stripes, and the band would not have accomplished all that they did without her. Furthermore, Meg White is far from a bad drummer. She's one of the most relentlessly individual drummers in rock history, and her style is utterly unique and unmatched. Let's take a closer look. One of the most frequent criticisms leveled against Meg White is that she doesn't have much technical prowess. And honestly, I agree. But really, why does that matter? Sure, there's genres of music like jazz, metal, and prog rock built upon technical complexity, but the White Stripes have never pretended to be King Crimson. The White Stripes are built in the traditions of garage rock, punk, and blues. Those music center not around technical prowess, but instead around emotional honesty. In fact, punk rock was created specifically in opposition to the elitist indulgences of progressive rock. It was a genre created by and for amateurs who just wanted to get together with some friends and let loose with loud guitars and smashing drums. Nobody ever celebrated the technical skills of Johnny Ramone or Sid Vicious, but that doesn't mean they weren't great musicians who changed the course of history. Jack White talked about this in an interview with the New York Post. Meg can do what those with technical prowess can't. She inspires people to bash on pots and pans. You need look no further than the White Stripes' debut album to hear this. I'm particularly fond of Meg's drumming on The Big Three Killed My Baby, a song driven by raw, loud drum punctuations. <laughs> This noisy drumming continued throughout much of the White Stripes' early career. Hello Operator would not be the track it is without Meg's stomping swagger. And Meg wasn't just a drummer, she also provided key vocals for the band. Listen to Your Southern Can Is Mine, the final song from the White Stripes' second album. Meg's voice infuses that song with a playful, schoolyard quality. By the time they released their third studio album, the White Stripes were breaking into the mainstream, and White Blood Cells features some of their most beloved songs to this day. And while the importance of Meg White's crashing cymbals in Fell in Love with a Girl or the chorus of Hotel Yorba can't be understated, I think my favorite Meg moment from that album is Little Room. Little Room is the White Stripes' ideal of simplicity taken to its extreme. There's no Jack White instrumentation and only two short verses of lyrics. As a result, Meg White's drumming has to carry the whole song on its back. Well, you're in your little room and you're working on something good But if it's really good You're gonna need a bigger room Meg's drumming in this is simple, but it's true to herself, true to her own style. And that's one of the most important things Meg brings to the White Stripes music. Honesty. Meg's drumming has always been honest. It has always been unapologetically Meg. She's not trying to imitate other drummers. She's playing the music that she wants to play the way she wants to play it. She's leaning fully into her style. 
and the simplicity of that style is where a lot of the White Stripes sound comes from. Jack White told the AV Club that 70-80% to of the White Stripes sound came from working within the rigid structures provided by Meg's drumming. There's an overall structure of simplicity, and it revolves around Meg's drumming style, and it can't be beat. We can't do those structures in the raconteurs. We couldn't do them if we wanted to, and that's the beauty of Meg. You can hear this beat structure in some of the White Stripes' most iconic songs, particularly on their fourth album, Elephant. Seven Nation Army and The Hardest Button to Button are two of the most successful songs of the band's entire career, and both thrive on simple, thumping drum beats. Even as Jack White is displaying his guitar prowess on other Elephant songs like Ball and Biscuit, it's Meg's pounding beat that creates a through line for the song. I think the album that Meg shines best in is Get Behind Me Satan. That entire album is an exercise in percussion, exemplified by the piano lines. On my doorbell, the piano is in perfect synergy with Meg's echoing drums. Similarly, Meg is in the driver's seat on Denial Twist. And even when there's not a piano, Meg straight sends as hard as she can on Instinct Blues. Personally, my favorite aspect of Meg White's drumming might be the way she uses her cymbals. Instinct Blues shows this off, but White Moon also displays a different side of her crashing cymbal hits. Well, my nose keeps on bleeding Cause it's really that I'm needing I better call out a meeting Of the boys Of the boys Honestly, White Moon feels like a song that's reflective of Meg White's personality. The music is subdued and quiet for the most part, but the calm is punctuated by thrashing cymbal hits. And on Get Behind Me Satan, Meg even gets a vocal solo on passive manipulation. Women, listen to your mothers. Don't just succumb to the wishes of your brothers. That song uses minimalism in order to create an anthemic feminist cry, one that would feel hollow were it not sung in Meg's voice. In the White Stripes' final album, Icky Thump, Jack White branched out and experimented with his instrumentation and arrangement. And honestly, a lot of that album might read as a Jack White solo album were it not for the drums. Whether it's on Icky Thump, Little Cream Soda, or Conquest, Meg White's drums are essential to keeping Icky Thump within the White Stripes sound. Ah! Meg did plenty for the White Stripes musically across their career, but she serves a more important role beyond that, too. Because the White Stripes have never been solely about the music. From the very beginning, the White Stripes were an experiment in aesthetic. And that aesthetic was one of primal simplicity and minimalism. This is most clear in their iconic color scheme, but it pervades every aspect of the band. Even the makeup of the band, one man and one woman, gets to this primal feeling. You can see this in the artwork of Get Behind Me Satan. That image creates a kind of duality and explores biblical imagery by giving Meg an apple. Each member represents different sides of an archetypal binary within human society. The wild, eccentric extroversion of Jack White and the simple, understated introversion of Meg. By stripping the trappings of excess from their music, the White Stripes tap into a special kind of playful innocence. Jack White told the Willamette Week about this in 2000. There's definitely a childishness in it. From Meg's standpoint, the drumming is real primitive, and I really love that. Early in their career, Jack and Meg claimed to be siblings rather than a couple, a move that added to the feeling of childishness. When read through that lens, their songs speak to a special kind of pre-sexual affection. And as a vocalist, Meg's high, gentle voice captures this emotion perfectly. Listen to In the Cold Cold Night, a simple song that burns with the simple romance of adolescence. You make me feel a little older Like a full-grown woman might 
But even after the true nature of Jack and Meg's relationship had come out, the innocence remains. Rag and Bone is a song full of light-hearted joy, and that joy comes from the interplay between Meg and Jack. And of course, Meg's drumming throughout the song remains thunderous as ever. Meg White never spoke much in interviews, but she didn't need to. Throughout her entire career, Meg spoke through drum beats that you felt in your chest, through cymbal hits like breaking dishware, and through tambourine grooves that reminded you of the childlike joy to be found in creating simple, pure music. Meg White's drum beats have never been intricate, they've never been complex, and they've never been flashy. But they've always been at the very heart of what makes the White Stripes tick. Jack White himself said the whole point of the White Stripes was the liberation of limiting yourself. And of course, Jack was a driving creative force behind the band. But at the end of the day, the true liberation in the music of the White Stripes comes from the drums. And it comes from Meg White. If Meg White is the unsung hero of the White Stripes, Nebula is the unsung hero of Polyphonic. Ever since we launched Nebula last fall, it's provided a space for me to grow and experiment as a creator, and a place for me to dabble with longer form content. That's why I've got two originals up on Nebula right now, The Dark Side of the Moon Project and Led Zeppelin's Epics. And there's a lot more than just me. My good friend Volksgeist just launched his first Nebula original, A Brief History of Synthesizers, and it's fantastic. And of course, there's so much more to choose from. So what is Nebula? Well, it's a streaming service created by and for creators to give us a place to experiment with independent educational content outside of the constraints of YouTube. And Nebula has partnered with CuriosityStream, the best place online to stream professionally made documentary content. That means that if you use the code in the description to sign up for a year of CuriosityStream, you'll also get full access to Nebula. If you're looking for somewhere to start on CuriosityStream, the original series Breakthrough has been keeping me informed about the coronavirus. Check out episodes on the race for a vaccine, treating the disease, and the psychology of a pandemic. And if you make sure to sign up with the link in the description, you'll also be able to head over to Nebula to watch originals by some of the best educational creators on YouTube. More than just that, using that link shows CuriosityStream that I sent you, which is a big help for my channel. So thanks for tuning in.